Hello tarot lovers and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, you've come to the right place because this is where you are going to connect with your deck. If you're new here, my name is Elizabeth and on this channel, we talk about building your spiritual confidence so you can listen to your intuition and read your tarot cards with ease. And today is my last month of my free a card a day challenge. I have been drawing tarot cards for 365 days. I started on the 1st of August and I have finished on the 31st of July. It has been absolutely mammoth, but I have pulled my tarot cards along with all of my wonderful followers who are part of my free challenge. However, the challenge keeps going just because I finished doesn't mean to say that it doesn't keep going. Um, I will continue to post my posts and certainly uh, keep the challenge going for people who find me after I finished this fabulous challenge that I wrote. It's a free challenge. If you would like to be part of it, all you have to do is go to connectwithyourdeck.com forward slash challenge. And if you want to make sure that you don't miss any more of my videos, you need to subscribe and click the notifications bell. And don't forget to hit that little thumbs up like, because that helps my channel as we progress along teaching the wonderful cards. So I have had an amazing, amazing month. So the topic for July was nurture your creativity. What a fantastic topic for me to finish on. And I have to say, as I've traveled through all of the um, topics, the same theme has come up over and over again. And if you look at my shelves behind me, you'll understand what that theme is. And it's about slowing down, taking time out and organizing my life so that I will have space to actually think about what's important. And I kind of feel like I've lost my way in that, if that makes sense. It's not that I don't enjoy what I'm doing and I don't enjoy my life, but I feel like I'm, I'm a bit, I've lost my way somehow. And that's come through for the whole 12 months. So I'm sort of thinking about now that I've finished the challenge, well, how can I put some things in place that have really come up for me um, as I've been going through reading my cards? So my next videos will be on finishing the challenge and some new pages, which if you're going to be purchasing my journal, and I have a, um, whoops, I'll put these down here stuff everywhere here. I have a book now for you as well as um, instant download pages which look like this and you can put into a journal. Um, so basically you can use those and if you choose to purchase my journal that helps me to continue doing what I'm doing. Or you can use an exercise book. It doesn't matter. It's a free challenge. If you want to be part of it, connect with your deck.com forward slash challenge. That's where you register. And then you receive all of the emails and all of the videos that explain exactly how to be part of the challenge. So um, I have got, uh, what was I talking about? <laughs> July, that's right. Um, so I have got this gorgeous deck. I've got the the, um, the Wild Unknown Tarot that I've used, which is absolutely stunning. Another gorgeous deck. And I really enjoyed her um, um, interpretations, of, uh, Chris Cran's interpretations of the cards. Absolutely beyond stunning. Um, so I will spin the camera around. I will show you my journal and my journey to the end of the challenge. And then from there, um, I think it's really up to you. You can start the challenge anytime you like. Uh, you don't have to start when I started in August. And, and certainly don't wait till January. Don't say to yourself, oh no, I've got to wait till January to get started. Don't do that. Start 
now. Start now. Um, become part of our community. The secret source to learning the tarot is a little bit every day. Don't let anyone tell you you have to spend lots and lots of money to learn the tarot. And certainly if you follow me, I am going to take you on my journey as I delve deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into the meanings of the cards. So take care. I'm going to spin the camera around and show you my card a day journal and um, and I will see you in a moment. So this is my journal and this is available in my Etsy shop and I will put a link to my journal in the comments so you if you like the look of this journal you can go and grab one you don't have to buy the journal to be part of my free challenge some people are using just an exercise book but it is a way of supporting my channel and the work that i do teaching the tarot so the journal is just um, instant download pages um, it has some um, instructions, but of course, there are links right in the front to come across to my um, my YouTube channel and watch the uh, instructional videos, etc. And of course, if you join my challenge, connectwithyourdeck.com forward slash challenge, you can get a series of free emails that will help you understand the challenge more and more. So... The, these are available and you basically can download it straight away. You, um, you don't have to wait. If you're happy to wait and you want something that's a little bit more complete, you can also um, purchase my, especially if you want, a, want hard copy and you don't have the capacity to print, um, there is my card a day challenge journal that is a complete journal uh, journal available in my Etsy shop. I can't speak. <laughs> um, that is available in my Etsy shop, and um, and that is it's a little bit more expensive, and you will have to wait for it. And of course, the supply line's just terrible at the moment, but it is available for you to. Uh, download and have as the journal in hard copy. If you like good notes and you use an iPad, I also have an iPad version of this journal in my Etsy shop and I will make sure that that is available for you to have a look at as well. So here is the, um, the journal. Now, the actual cover and all these little pages I bought myself, including using my label maker to put these in. They all don't come with it, uh, just so you know. This is an A4 size journal. Um, it's Sorry, not A4. It is an A5 size journal. Switch on your brain, Elizabeth. It is an A5 size journal. What I did was I took the A4 size and told my printer to resize to A5. If you are in the United States of America, please do not try and replicate this size. A lot of people said, oh, I love your journal, I want it. You'll find it really hard to find an A5 um, binder. You'll be better off to get a half letter size, use the US letter size, tell your printer to print um, in half letter size or re get the dimensions of half letter if your printer can't do that and tell it what size you want. And then these are just printed double-sided. These pages here, uh, you only get two of these and you just need to print over and over and over and over again until you get to 365 because for me to make you a journal with 365 pages in it is just too huge. It's too huge uh, to download electronically. So the, um, the Good Notes version has the 365 pages in it and it's all um, hyperlinked and everything so you can find everything. But that is designed to be used in good notes. I've had people purchasing it and then whinging to me, I can't use it. It's made very, very clear on that listing. Please only purchase this if you are intending to use it with good notes. So that is the uh, journal I used for July. So let's go across to July. I used uh, the 
Wild Unknown Tarot by Kim Kranz. Now, the cards are beautiful. I'll show you a few of them. I've got them up here, the ones that I used. And I will do a review on these cards. So that's another thing for me to put on my to-do list. They are beautiful. The guidebook, she did have some um, interesting things to say about the tarot. She's used the traditional order of the tarot, not the uh, Golden Dawn order or the um, the uh, the Rider Waite Smith order, which is slightly shifted to reflect the um, fitting into the astrological calendar. And the astrological calendar, if I find my big book of cheat sheets, and if you're interested in these cheat sheets, they're all available in my Etsy shop. Um, this is the tarot cards all on the astrological wheel. And the order was changed a little bit. What he's done is he's changed um, justice, which is card number 11, with Strength, which is card number eight. He swipped them around to make it all fit onto the calendar. So, you know, some people are happy about that. Some people are not happy about that. I still think that learning the Rider Waite Smith is important. And we will do a big dissection of that deck and the history of it so you can understand more about it as we go along in my journey to learn the tarot and delve really deep into it. And if you would like to be part of that, um, make sure you like, subscribe and hit that notifications bell. Better still, join my newsletter list and then you won't lose me because I do lots and lots of trainings for free. And how my, my um, community works is I create journals that help you learn the tarot. It's my thing. I create cheat sheets that help you learn the tarot. It's my thing. And if you choose to buy those journals and cheat sheets, you certainly support the work that I do. So the journal is uh, the topic for this month. And this is my last month. I can't believe I've finished. And I'm going to have to show you how I'm going to store all these pages, how I stored them as I went along because my journal got fatter and fatter and fatter. And, uh, and that will be a separate video. I'm going to do a whole training series now that um, I'm... Um, I finished the challenge to show you all the things I did, things that worked, things that didn't work, all of that. So um, I just record my, um, my readings here. I use rub out pens and they're great because if you make a mistake like that, you just rub it out. And if you'd like some of those, they're available in my Amazon shop. And um, you just, um, if, if you purchase something from my Amazon shop, of course, it, I get a small commission. And that helps me keep doing my, excuse me, my tarot teaching. So all the questions are here. The questions are also available in my Facebook group, which you get um, invited to uh, when you join the challenge and also um, on Instagram. And all the instructions to play on Instagram are included in the email trainings that come through when you join the challenge. So that is July. And you can see here that the percentages, um, pentacles is a little bit low, but overall, they're not really, they're quite even. And that often happens. And it's interesting, if I go back through and I look at all of my percentages, some months, most months, they're pretty even. And I was sort of getting a bit despondent that, I mean, maybe we've got some more major arcana and some swords here, which is about intellect and thinking and, uh, you know, deep, your deepest feelings inside you. And it doesn't surprise me that I'm getting a lot of major arcana cards in my readings because my thoughts about what's coming through each month, which seems to be a really similar message, is actually really deeply to do with me. So, um, but generally, they're pretty even, you know. And I was starting to think, gosh, you know, was it even worth doing the... Um, doing the percentages and then I thought no it is because I have had a few months where they've been quite dramatically where I've pulled certain cards and so if you think about the meanings of the arcanas 
you start to get a sense of what the overall message might be for the whole month. And again, it just helps you when you're thinking about all these things. The idea of this is, yes, of course, we know the tarot is always giving us messages. Last month, I pulled the two of pentacles three times and I pulled lots of pentacles. So that tells you it's a, it's a message about grounding. It's a message about what you're doing in your life. So, um, it, you know, it, it does help you get an overall sense of uh, the meaning of the cards. But the idea of this whole challenge is to help you learn the tarot, to help you tune in every single day and pull a card and do a tiny little bit of learning because that's how it sticks. And even if as you're doing these pages, you can only pull a card and maybe, you know, circle the element even if that's all you can do. And then the next pass through the journal, you do a little bit more. And then the next pass through the journal, you go, okay, well, I've pulled my card. I'm going to do this next little section. It's up to you. If you're very, very busy, it might take you quite a while to complete your journal. You might pull your cards and then do all your interpretations at the end of the month and make space to sit and do them all. That's fine. But my main purpose of this journal is to help you have that connection with your deck every single day because that to me has been the secret source to learning it more so than intense study where I tried to pour it all in within five minutes I mean all those videos out there learn the tarot in a day uh, look, I may end up doing one just because it'll get some exposure to my channel but it, it goes against the grain of everything that I like to teach because it um, it really isn't realistic. The tarot is a relationship. You connect with your deck. That's how you read. Absolutely. All right. So I pick. I just picked out some symbols from the cards that um, came out of the deck most. So we're looking at King of Wands, Ace of Wands, the Moon and the World. And I picked these out and then I talked about what they mean. Sometimes I've done colours. Sometimes it's been one card like last month. There was one card that I pulled three times and it really spoke to me. So I did that one. It, you know, you can do whatever you like. I want you to have that that um, flexibility. If I look here at the repeating numbers, we had seven twos across the uh, sorry two sevens so that's uh seven is about in numerology is confidence and ability loving support nurturing relationships um we got three sixes balance stability quest to answer life mysteries ideas disruption and desire so here you're looking about you're looking at your confidence um and your abilities to step out into the world and then creating that stability to be able to do that, which is very similar to the message in last month and messages that I've had previously this year. And you may find that every month you get a different message or you might find you're like me and every month you get a very similar message. It really is about what's going on for you at that time of doing your challenge draws and your life. So my Keywords, again, came from here. I picked out the ones that um, appeared most frequently. So you're, and then I just write. And what I do is I look at these words and then I just write. And I tend to do it, I hate to say it, on a scrap piece of paper first and then I copy it into here. Um, but of course, I don't really need to do that because I'm using rubber pens. So if there's a disaster, I can just rub it all out. Your creativity fuels your personal growth, energy and ideas. It takes you into the mystery um, of life so you can have a sense of harmony and wholeness. Um, live a creative life. Do what brings you joy. More planned time out and more planned time to explore creative ideas. More planning in my life so I can be more aware of what I'm doing. And this is where now I'm not doing the challenge. I'm actually going to spend some time doing some planning. I'll probably use my planning journal, which I uh, is available in my Etsy shop and I've done a whole training on, on that planning journal um, and I certainly will if I come up with any really great 
templates or anything like that as I'm putting things together, I will share those with you. Um, I'm looking at putting together a, a, um, a journal sort of that describes how I got started in doing what I do and I'm, I'm thinking that that might be really helpful to many of you and that will be a journal and maybe even a video series that I do on my channel. These ideas, they all form in my head. The next one, of course, is introduction to the tarot. And I'm so excited about it because I've got so many ideas to help you get your head around the tarot and what it is. So if we look at these sheets, I did a description last month and have done in previous months about how to use these sheets. But I wanted to show you here, this one, I've got a three-part question. So I've got um, a tarot or oracle card to describe your creativity, your creative blockage and your creative action. So I just pulled three cards and then I wrote about them in the colours that they are. So I got the Hierophant, uh, Wheel of Fortune and the Eight of Pentacles and I just wrote about them here. I just picked the Hierophant. Uh, oh, sorry, no, I didn't. I got all three cards and I just went through and, and circled their... Um, um, their attributions, their Golden Dawn attributions. And then here, I just put the symbols of meaning that came from these cards. I just drew them. Um, really, um, it's about how, you know, you sort of need to be a little bit creative with this particular question because it doesn't quite fit the cheat sheet. And I'd written the questions before and the questions were sort of set in stone because the questions were going out onto social media and I didn't want to confuse everybody. So I thought, look, I've, I'm have i just going to have to make some of them fit. And there's a couple of months where I have done these three-part questions and they just don't quite fit. If you want more space, of course, the journal comes with dot grid pages and you can print these to use inside the journal. Um, the other card that I wanted to talk through with you was, where is she? High Priestess, where is she? Because the question was, um, pull a card, where is it? Here we are. Pull, create it, create your own tarot or oracle card. Now, I'm super busy. I don't have time to create my own tarot or oracle card. Elizabeth, what were you thinking? Everybody's busy. Who's got time to create a tarot or oracle card? But look at this. I chose, I just chose my favorite card from the deck and I used that. So if you get stuck, have a creative interpretation of the question. Don't feel like you have to do what I said because, you know, I want you, again, this is, the topic is nurture your creativity. The whole thing about the tarot is that it's creative. When I was at Tarot Guild on Saturday, we were talking about the tarot and I said, uh, and, and timing in the tarot. And I said, look, what I do is I do teach tarot timing. I teach it in terms of learning planets, astrology, um, the golden dawn and the history of the tarot and how it all fits together with astrology. And I said, but I don't teach it in that you need to remember this. Now, I must say the astrological attributions for the major arcana are starting to stick in my head. The ones for the minor arcana, it's just too much to remember. It is way too much to remember. And maybe one day I'll remember it all. But um, I don't know why, but the major arcana cards are sticking in my head. Um, and it's just another way of understanding the meaning of the card. And eventually that sort of starts to gel with osmosis. As you experience different ways of interpreting the cards, whether it is going and picking a different deck to use with your Rider Waite Smith to help you. Um, the the Lightseer's Tarot uh, is an absolutely beautiful deck, and I've just come across another one in our Facebook group. So don't forget to join our, our Facebook group, and you can find our Facebook group. Easiest way is to is to join the challenge. Connect with your deck.com forward slash challenge. 
you will be asked for your email address. That's how I communicate with everybody. It's the easiest way. You come onto my newsletter list and make sure you open emails because anyone that doesn't open an email for six months, I kick them off because I have to pay for the number of people that are on my list. And if people are not active, then I can't, I can't keep, um, I can't keep, uh, keep sending you emails. So make sure you open the emails, go click on things, go and watch videos and that sort of thing and really enjoy learning the tarot. And if you're really busy, my hope is that you will lie in bed, even if you listen to me talking about the tarot before you go to sleep is a really great way to absorb the cards. But in our Facebook group, there was another card and it was actually for Two of Pentacles, which was a card that spoke to me last month. And I looked at this card and I was like, oh my goodness, does that speak to me? And I thought, well, that's telling me, Elizabeth, that's your next deck. I do like decks and the girl that posted this card in the group um, said to me that the guidebook is amazing. I like decks that give me an interpretation of the card based on the their interpretation. So let's have a look. I, I had a look in here before and I didn't see it, but I'm going to have another look. Uh, let's look at the Empress. Uh, sorry, High Priestess. And you've got a beautiful card here, but she's not talking about why she chose a tiger for the High Priestess, the symbolism of the tiger, why it's dark, black sky behind, why there's a what looks like the world there. I'm presuming we're talking about the mystique of a tiger, that the tiger's got the world at its feet, feline the feminine power the black behind is the mystery um i'm just not quite sure so she's written here the high priestess sits in stillness from there she's able to access realms others pass by without noticing the vast world of intuition dreams and mystery she uses silence and non-action to harness this power sometimes this card appears to remind you to listen more closely to the voice within other times it's a sign to look past the obvious to find what's being kept secret or hidden within a given situation acknowledge the shadows and it's a great Great, it's a great little description of the card and it gets you thinking just in a different way about what the card might mean. But I just would have loved a little bit more about her, just her thinking around her interpretation of the card because that's what helps me to think, yes, I agree with that or no, I don't. And so um, that's the power of picking a really good modern contemporary deck to help you learn the tarot. Of course, our gorgeous um, Rider Waite Smith uh, deck comes with a little white book. Don't bother looking at it. It'll make you more confused than ever. And the, um, the guide to the tarot that uh, Arthur Waite has written, and I do have a copy of it, uh, it's dated. And his, his interpretations of the cards, they're written sort of a bit in ye olde English. And I don't know, I've read them and thought, right, there's something in that for all of us. You know, like I, I really, some of them were like, mm. so you're best to really perhaps listen to some more contemporary um, uh, interpretations of the cards, making sure, of course, that they are respectful of the original meanings and then, you know, embed your own experience and the experience of others through um, the tarot decks that they create. And then as you start to overlay your experience and understand the cards that you love in the deck, that's when you start to really be able to look at a spread and say, oh, I know what's going on here. And I know the message either the, of what I'm supposed to hear for myself or that I'm supposed to be interpreting for someone else. So that is July. I'm finished. I can't believe it. Uh, I really can't believe it. I'm, I'm absolutely, I'm just, I'm like, wow, I finished. I had to set up my desk so that I just would come in and read and do my 
posting for the day and I did it for 365 days. How's that? I will show you. I'm not going to use this this folder long term to store all my pages because I'm probably going to want to use it for something else. So I'm going to set these up so I can archive them. And as part of the training, I will show you how to do all that. And of course, if you're using my book that I've just launched, you'll have everything in the book and you can just keep going back to it again and again and again as you work through it to finish it. Um, if you're using the Good Notes or Notability version that's all hyperlinked, etc., then you probably would be looking to store that somewhere in the cloud so you can go back and reference it when you finish. Um, so that's it from me. I do hope you have enjoyed watching these videos. There is more training coming. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notifications bell so you never miss a one, another one of my uploads. And don't forget to register for the challenge. Connect with your deck.com forward slash challenge, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.